Welcome back to an animation recommendation. And this time it's not about either a short or a book or a program or a tool. It's more about the industry as a whole. If you're following the animation industry or if you're following me on Twitter, you've seen that I've been retweeting a couple of things. And I'm also, I'm not shy about salaries and just surveys and just the general state about the animation industry because you have to be aware of what the standards are, what the fair wages are, what fair conditions are, and not be working at a company where maybe the conditions are not so good, but you think this is the normal way and everything after that needs to be like this. I'm not a fan of the saying, well, this is how it's always been done. So it doesn't mean anything. It just means that either people tolerate it like that, that's how they wanted it to be. There's, there are always better ways to make your work environment better, the relationships better, your salary better, all in a fair way. Now, this all leads me to something that I saw just recently, and it says here, after like 20 years or so of working animation, I firmly believe that workers with better schedules, with more days off and treated with more respect, create more creative and thus lucrative work. I'm a very goal oriented person. I always turn my work in on time. I'm but listen, and then you can see the thread there. And I 100% agree. You will generally, I mean, again, maybe this is subjective. Everything that I'm going to say now, of we just said before, is from a subjective point of view. But in my pretty much 20 years of animating, and almost it was like 18 years of working professionally, it's always been better when I was rested, obviously well treated, but like where you're in an environment where it works for you versus you're being hounded, where you work crazy over time, where you just break down your body or physically and mentally, you're just exhausted all the time. It's just not a sustainable work environment for you to have a long lasting career. Now, I say also all of this as an outsider. When I started ILM, ILM was union and then not union for the longest time. So I have been not with a union for the longest time. Now switching to Warner Brothers, which is technically in LA, I am now part of a union shop. So I am also looking at all of this in terms of new education and learning more. So it's not just me saying all this going, I know everything and trust me, this is a recommendation, hence the title, to really dive into some of the different accounts I'm going to blend in there and just learn more about the industry. And I'm also coming from a very spoiled perspective where I have been treated really well. Again, subjectively. That doesn't mean that everybody at the companies that are worked out or things or like schools or whatever, whatever I'm involved with has the same experience like me. But I have to say that so far, it's been really, really great. And I can't, when I mean, you read some of those statements that people have gone through in terms of work environments and bosses and deadlines and just the grueling aspect of this industry, I've been super spoiled that I've never been part of that. It's always been great, but it doesn't mean that that's the norm. But I will always advocate for a better work environment, for better wages, just for a, a, a better support of animation workers. So if you go through these, I'm going to go and show you. I'm going to put these in the description, but you see all those hashtags for Storycraft Unite, equal pay for equal paint. There's so many in there and you can see that you can sign petitions even if you're not in the union. You're going to see this a lot, Storycraft Unite with that hashtag. And there are lots of things that you can just look at. This is from a, a story point of view, this animation story group. You have animation guild writers, color designers, there's a bunch of stuff. And if if you follow me on Twitter or I would follow a Salty Animator, uh, there's, there are many accounts out there that have anonymous submissions, for instance, in terms of salaries. So I would always recommend that you look up and educate yourself in terms of salary ranges, but then also as you want to apply for a company, do your research and find out what are the working conditions, what do people say about it. And generally, if you are interested in a union and how the negotiations are going at the moment, I would recommend that you just follow directly the Animation Guild. You got a lot of news, you got a lot of help, a lot of articles, there's a lot in there in terms of education where you will know a lot more about this industry. And again, this could be not of interest because you're not part of a union. You might not be also in LA or in America as a whole, but I think generally, wherever you are, city, country, this sounds so like I'm preaching down, like you need to educate yourself, but it's also for your own self-interest. If you just want to look at it from a very self-serving point of interest, it's better to know more about wages, working conditions, what's good and what's bad, so that when you are in an interview and you know, you're not part of a union, you're not supporting any of this, from a very selfish point of view, you you still need to negotiate for yourself when you are in a job interview position. So it's better to have more information than the company so you have a negotiation point so you know the minimum salary, working conditions, health benefits, vacation, sick days, all that stuff. It's better to know more so you have a better position when it comes to negotiating your future job, your next job, and so on. So that will be my animation condition for uh, this for this week, for you know, whenever I publish these. But check out the link in the description. I put in all of these accounts in there. Read up on it. It's super interesting. It's definitely helpful and that's my recommendation.